Um, so today I'll talk to you about novel biomarkers and in particular host-based biomarkers. Um, so I'm going to change a little bit gears in comparison to the previous talk, how we can use them to distinguish between causes of febrile illness. And um, as, as you said, I'm based at Imperial College London. So in the recent years, um, we and others have been trying to establish a new paradigm shift. So instead of trying to detect the pathogen that may be lying in sites that are not accessible or in numbers that are very low so they're not detectable, we've been trying to identify patterns in the blood of patients and we've been looking at genes and the way the genes are expressed. And these patterns are so specific and so unique that can allow us to um, distinguish the, the, between causes um, of disease and infection. So for example, you can see in this uh, graph here how the viral response and the bacterial response are um, unique and different and can allow us to use uh, the expression of genes as a means of diagnostic um, use. So this information is readily available in blood immune cells. And uh, how do we quantify gene expression in the blood? So we um, use uh, some special tubes. In this case, I'm showing an example of a, a particular set of Pax gene tubes. And what they do is you collect blood from the patients and um, these special tubes stop transcription and prevent the RNA from degradation. And what we managed to get is a snapshot, snapshot, a picture of how the genes in the patient's blood were expressed at the moment in time that the sample was collected. And uh, I'm sure some of you may be familiar with methods of quantifying uh, gene expression and there are the targeted methods like RT-PCR, but then there are um, much more newer methods like microarrays or RNA sequencing that allow us to look at thousands of genes of the whole transcriptome simultaneously in a very hypothesis-free um, approach. And what we do is we, we get the data, we get the quantification, we get the levels of expression of the different genes, and we try to identify the best biomarkers, the genes that would different, their expression would differentiate in the best way possible between different disease groups. And we always try to um, identify those models and use them to predict disease um, cause of disease in uh, independent data sets to make sure that our models and our features are generalizable and have the potential to be used as diagnostic tests. So having this pipeline um, set up, we decided to try and tackle first one of the big problems and particularly big in uh, the African continent, the problem of diagnosing tuberculosis disease. And I'm sure um, many of you will be familiar with this issue and how the tests that we have available at the moment, they're not sensitive or specific enough to fully um, help us diagnose uh, patients with TB. And the problem is even bigger when we um, talk about children, HIV positive individuals and uh, extra pulmonary cases. So almost 10 years ago, we set out a study with uh, three different recruitment sites in Africa, in Kenya, Malawi, and South Africa. And we recruited patients um, into three main groups. So we had patients with confirmed TB, latent TB, and then other diseases that mimic TB phenotypically um, and are part of the differential. And we ran gene expression microarray analysis for all these patients. And we were very um, intrigued and very happy to see that there is a, a very big set of genes that were differentially expressed between TB and other diseases. But using variable selection approaches, uh, we tried to identify the smallest set of genes that would discriminate between TB and other diseases and would have the potential to be used as a diagnostic test. And you can see here that from, a, from thousands of genes that were differentially expressed, we managed to um, whittle this down to 51 originally published and now down to three that can form the base of a diagnostic test. And um, you can see here how well the test, the, the three genes performed. So you can see how it separate, the three genes separate very nicely the patients with tuberculosis disease from other diseases with a high sensitivity, a bit less specificity, but overall a very good area under the curve. And as always, we wanted to benchmark um, the performance against the widely used expert MDB. And we had the data from the output of expert 
from um, patients in Kenya. And you can see here that although the expert was very highly specific, and this is very well known, our three gene signature, the combination of the three genes was highly sensitive. So it opens up the, the, the field of using these tests in combination potentially. One other um, clinical question that puzzles the clinical teams worldwide is how can we distinguish bacteria from viral infection? And uh, how can we identify the patients, the children that need, uh, the, in this case, the children that need antibiotics that need to be treated for bacterial infection and separate them from those that have a viral infection? And here I'm showing some data from a new funded study we um, recently completed that by using the best diagnostics available in different EU settings and the Gambia, we only managed to identify with confidence the causative um, uh, pathogen for the minority of patients in our set. But following the similar gene expression analysis pipeline, we were able to identify two genes only that by combination, by measuring them in the blood of patients, we were able to identify with um, very good AUC, very good sensitivity and specificity, patients with bacterial infection that then can be um, followed up and be given, treated with antibiotics and um, from patients with viral disease. Um, there are, these are just two examples, two applications of how gene um, expression measured in the blood can identify disease groups. And it's been shown recently that host RNA signatures have unprecedented diagnostic potential. And there have been many, many uh, publications out there for different diseases, including dengue, including malaria, TB, as I mentioned before, Kawasaki disease. And um, in the last three minutes of my talk, I'll try to tell you what we're trying to do at the moment and probably where the, the, the field is heading, the gene expression diagnostic field. And I'm sure you've, um, you, and you've heard from students just before that these, the, the, um, trying to identify the cause of fever, it's not a dichotomous question. And the way I described the questions before, I, I posed them as a dichotomous question. What I was asking was, is it TB or something else? Is it bacterial or viral? So as, as part of the um, Diagnostics for Africa Consortium and uh, other consortia, we're trying to rephrase this question and make it a little bit more realistic because in clinical management of patients with fever, the question is not dichotomous. You have multiple causes of fever that you have to consider when the patient's in front of you. So this is what uh, we're trying to do exactly with the data and the modeling and trying to move away from this binary way of phrasing questions to a more multi approach where having the patient in front of us and being able to measure the genes and the way they're expressed in the blood, we can classify them in different groups. So for example, TB, an inflammatory condition, Kawasaki disease, and then viral and bacterial, but also co-infections, and also go down to the level of pathogen. And very briefly, I'll show you some, some of the very recent data we got so um, we used publicly available gene expression data and uh, the patients were categorized in six different groups. So we have definite bacterial, definite viral, inflammatory, Kawasaki disease, TB and malaria. And we split the data into a training and a test set. Um, and we corrected for path effects, we fit the model and we identified 145 genes that were the, the base is the classification algorithm which we use to, to try and classify the patients into the causes of fever. And you can see here on this slide that even for, for a very detailed level, for the pathogen level, those 145 genes were able to classify most of the patients correctly into the groups um, we're showing here. And there were, so for, for, all the, for all the groups apart from one, we achieved an area under the care over 90%. Um, rhinovirus had a little bit less performance, but a lot can be said about finding a positive um, result for, for uh, a child with rhinovirus in their nose. And we were also able to classify the patients in a broad level of classification into fewer groups with even better accuracy. So 
as part of the Digital Diagnostics for Africa Consortium, we're also thinking about the next step as highlighted by Aubrey before. So we're trying to think on how we can bring those uh, incredible findings to the patient, to the clinic and to the clinical teams. And we recently published in JAMA Pediatrics the first proof of concept um, results. So the first proof of concept approach where we show that the two gene signature for bacterial and viral infection can be measured on a chip and can give us exactly the same sensitivity and specificity as the rather complex microarray or RNA-seq processes. And uh, just a couple of examples on how the results could look like as, as an interface if we were to give those to the clinical teams. So these are real data from the patients. And for example, we have here a patient that had high probability for malaria on the broad level, high probability for malaria on the detailed level, and indeed they had malaria. We have another patient, they had high probability for viral infection on the broad level, high probability for flu on the low level, and they indeed had influenza. And similarly, we can do the same for co-infections, which is very encouraging and a very real world problem. So um, we can do this for two pathogens, the viral pathogens or one uh, bacterial and viral pathogen. So this patient had pneumococcus, high probability for pneumococcus, high probability for flu, and indeed they had those two pathogens detected. So to conclude, I hope I've convinced you that minimal gene expression signatures from whole blood can distinguish one disease from the other. Um, we think that multi-class classification, which follows exactly the clinical thinking process, um, is uh, much more real world and it holds great potential in combination with um, the, the brilliant technology that um, our partners bring. Uh, we can potentially offer a solution that is accurate, cost-effective, and uh, very portable based on the gene expression measurements in the blood. And I'd like to thank everyone who's involved in, in this endeavor over the past decade and uh, the Digital Diagnostics Network for Africa. Thank you.